Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my experience and things to do in Oaxaca City, Mexico. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait A first time, a first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me in Mexico most of which was solo and when I first got there I actually had no idea what the city was about my friend initially asked me to go and he left within like three days that we were there together so then I decided to stay in Mexico by myself and it was one of my favorite 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 solo trips of my life so three days ended up becoming a month for me and if i can do it all over again i totally would before i go into the things you want to do in mexico don't forget to subscribe to my channel and for some photography inspiration in oaxaca to head over to my instagram to find more of that oaxaca is a beautiful beautiful amazing city with about 300,000 people living in the country it's also known as the food capital of mexico so if you love food you'll love oaxaca i was actually so pleased with all the food choices in oaxaca everything from fine dining to trying some of the most authentic food. On average, whenever I went to a fine dining restaurant with an appetizer, a main course dish, a drink, and tip, the bill would come out to 35 US dollars. That's the price of one dish at a fine dining restaurant out in the US. But if you are budgeting, there are so many other food options to choose from. But when you are there, you have to try Tayudas, which is Mexican pizza, mole, quesillo, which is Oaxacan cheese, chapulines, which are grasshoppers, memelas, nieves, which is ice cream, chocolate, and of course, tacos. Now, if you kind of stop to have to think about if you want to have grasshoppers or not, I'm telling you, it is actually not as bad as you think. That was the first time I've ever had an insect and it was really, really, really delicious. It kind of just tastes like a chip. Okay, I'm gonna have my chapulinas too. Ooh. <laughs> Mm. It's like lime and salt. Yeah, you just. I don't think you should look at them if you eat them, but they're not that bad. <laughs> oh my god, just saw a leg. <laughs> Oaxaca City is a small enough city where you can walk everywhere. For most of the hotspots, it's usually like a 15 minute walk. There are taxis within the city, but personally, I didn't ever have to call a taxi. But if you do want to do activities outside of the city, then yes, you will need a car. I do recommend renting a car for maybe two to three days. But if you're only in Oaxaca for just a couple of days, then I don't recommend you going out of the city because there's just so much to do in the city that'll make your trip worth it. If you're looking to work remotely, Oaxaca, it's a very digital nomad, solo travel friendly place to be in. There's so much to do out here. And plus, if you're looking to work remotely, there are so many coffee shops and co-working spaces with really good Wi-Fi as well. Cafe Bray, which was my absolute favorite. I spent most of my time there and they were open for so long. It is a spacious coffee shop and there's amazing Wi-Fi and some of the nicest, nicest workers. Other popular ones are Muse Cafe, Marito Mogul, Mogli, Mogli. <laughs> Cactus Lancheria, Cafe Bujulo. They have multiple locations all around Oaxaca and my absolute favorite is Philemon Coffee. Now Philemon Coffee is actually in Sochal Micho, which is not in the direct city, but it's maybe like a 20 to 30 minute walk outside. They don't have the best Wi-Fi, but I will say that it's my favorite, favorite coffee shop in all of Oaxaca. It's beautiful, it's hipster, and the neighborhood in itself is just so, so cute. If you are into photography, there are a lot of drone opportunities in Oaxaca. I probably flew my drone every day for like two weeks. <laughs> Santo Domingo is obviously a popular, popular drone spot, but my favorite in Oaxaca City was actually throwing out my drone at the Golgueta. The Golgueta, it's about like a 20 to 30 minute walk outside the city, but you'll get beautiful, beautiful views of the actual big tent looking thing. <laughs> and especially if you're there for sunset, that's like perfect. And after that, you want to go over to the Mirador and eat dinner there. And it's just like so beautiful, especially at night. You can see all the views of the city. It is a great date spot, but 
obviously I wanted to go eat by myself because who needs a man? <laughs> when I first went to Oaxaca, so many people were reaching out to me, asking me if I was safe, if I was crazy, that I was staying there by myself. But honestly, no. Oaxaca is an extremely, extremely solo travel friendly city. And I did feel super, super safe when I was there. Everyone there is so, so nice. And so many of the businesses there, they support each other too, which I love. But yeah, Mexico does have the perception where it is dangerous. And yes, there are a lot of places in Mexico where you should should not go to. But that's kind of like saying the entire US is safe when really it's not. <laughs> like I felt safer carrying my camera in Oaxaca than I usually do in- So now that you're there, and whether or not you're there for three days, five days, or a week, these are some of the top places that you want to see. So before anything, depending on how you like to travel, what's really popular in Oaxaca is actually going on free or paid walking tours. And obviously if you choose to go on paid tours, it's probably not going to be as good as the paid tours. <laughs> but if you are there, reach out to Arturo at Griolo Tours. I literally, I miss Arturo so much. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> He approached me when I was shooting one of the days and asked me about my vlogging camera set. And from there, he asked me if I want to go on a tour. And I was like, this guy is super nice and I feel like he knows so much of the city. So I agreed and he took me on literally the best, best tour I could have ever asked for. Thank you so much, Arturo. I'm here with Arturo today and Arturo is going to be my tour guide for the day. He is a Oaxacan local and he knows everything about the city, what you need to know, the culture and the history about Oaxaca. And he agreed to take me around and tell me everything I need to know that I want to share with you guys. You're probably gonna to wanna to go see and take pictures at the Santo Domingo. You're probably gonna also walk past it about like a hundred times because it is in the center of a lot, a lot of things. It's a great spot for sunrise and also just to chill at the end of the day. When I visited, a lot of things were closed, but when you're there, try to go see the Museum of Cultures located inside the Santo Domingo, the Botanical Gardens, which is also located inside the Santo Domingo. And I wish I was able to go to these because in the Botanical Garden, they have every single Oaxacan plant there. And then after you're done with that area, walk down the walking street. It's on the left side if your back is facing the Santo Domingo and you'll end up at the Zocalo, which is actually in translation center city. There are just so many nice spots and restaurants to go there. There's a lot of local vendors. I forget exactly where, but one of the restaurants with like an outdoor patio had literally the best tayudas there. I don't know what it's called and I wish I did, but if I remember, I will leave them in the comment section below. When you tour around the Zocalo, if you walk towards the left, <laughs> Yeah, well, depending on obviously which way you're looking at it, but the left. A really popular photography spot is Teatro Macedonia Alcala. Don't mind my Spanish. I literally am so, so bad with like the most American accent ever. And also when you go, just make sure you have a wide angle lens because you will not be able to get a photo of the entire building. Oaxaca is also popularly known for all their markets. So Benito Juarez is the first of the two markets that you want to come to. And there's a difference between the markets, right? Yes. Okay. Um, the majority of the difference in between the first market, Benito Juarez and 20 de Noviembre is the, the, the things that they have available. Here in Benito Juarez, you can find a little bit of everything. Arts and crafts from people from all of the regions of Oaxaca, whether it's shoes, sandals, uh, clothing, arts and crafts of El Ebriges, pots, vegetables, um, fresh meats, and also fresh seafood. Um, at the very end of the market, there's all of these items available. Also, um, you guys could have a nice little torta or a nice little ice cream in the small plaza. There's also those type of activities available. It's a mixture of everything here in Oaxaca and Benito Juarez. So pretty much if you want your groceries, you can come here and get your groceries and cook them at your hotel, your Airbnb or whatever it is. Yes. Okay, cool. Or if you want souvenirs, right? They yep. can go bring them back home to your yep. people. Yep. All right, cool. Exactly. This is the place to come for the souvenirs. Salud. Salud. <laughs> And then right across the street is Mercado 20 de Novembria. We are at the second market. 
the 20 the noviembre 20 de noviembre <laughs> we are here at the 20 de noviembre now this beautiful market has a little bit of different options where you can come and eat a hot meal originally you arrive and you can sit down there's uh there's soups like um uh, menudo uh caldo de panza also there is um playudas another option that we have here in 20 de noviembre is a hallway where they grill uh, meats for you on the spot. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. There's so much food out here. Yes. I'm ready yes. to eat. Are you ready to eat, guys? I'm ready to eat. Oh my god. Did he say casillo? Yeah, casillo. He said casillo. We want that cheese. Yep. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier in the video, literally my favorite drone spot, the Golgueta, is a place that's 20 to 30 minutes outside of the city. Golgueta is a celebration that happens every July, and the Oaxacans from all the indigenous areas come in their respective traditional costumes, which are known as tra tradajes, <laughs> and showcase some of their unique dances. So, the main reason why I actually went to Oaxaca was to try to go to Jueve el Agua, and unfortunately, it was closed due to COVID. But Herbert Agua is probably one of the most scenic, scenic landscapes of Oaxaca. You do need a car and it is about an hour and a half away from the center city. But honestly, it is so, so, so worth the visit. I actually am planning on going back just to go to Herbert Agua. I don't know when, but I just, I just need to go. There is no direct public transportation that goes there. I believe that there's a bus from center city that goes to Mitla and you can transfer from there over to Herbert Agua. But if you are renting a car and you are driving to Havalagua, I recommend going there and then heading over to Mitla for the markets and to Tlacalula <laughs> to go experience the Sunday markets. They are known for the Sunday markets and that's the thing that you want to do obviously on a Sunday. The Tlacalula market is a place to be on Sundays from Oaxaca. It's about a 40 minute drive up so you do have to rent a car. I'm sure there are tours that come around here but it's the biggest market here in Oaxaca City or actually just outside of Oaxaca City. And they sell everything from goods, foods, clothing, jewelry, everything you could ever think about. I actually got this notebook from there and I still use it as my journal to this day. If you are more of an outdoorsy person and you need a break from the city, reach out to Fernando from Coyote Adventures and ask him what hikes I'm doing for the week. Coyote Adventures literally took me to some of my favorite, favorite outdoor hikes in Oaxaca. And these are hikes that you probably will not find by yourself. Hiking in the outdoors is actually not really a thing in Oaxaca, but I love how Coyote is trying to advocate that. And on top of that, Coyote actually took me on a street tour as well. I did the street tour with Jessie and she's just so knowledgeable of all the art. If you haven't noticed already, there's so much street art. Instead of just viewing the art, it's another great way to discover and to learn more about the city. Whether or not you have a car or not, you want to make sure that you go visit Monte Alban. It is one of the most popular, popular activities. There are tours and there will be a lot of people around the Zocalo that will be selling you the tours, but you can also drive as well. When I went, I went with a group who I met actually the night before. They're so amazing and they decided to adopt me as a daughter for the day and we explored Monte Alban together. But just remember that if you are there, there are no drones allowed. And there's actually a hike that you can sign up for. I didn't do the hike, but I've heard that it's an amazing hike. And not too far away, you wanna go visit the Tree of Tool. However, the tree is closed due to COVID, but this is the widest tree in the whole entire world. It's actually bigger than just the Sequoia tree in California. And fun fact, it actually takes about 33 people to hold their hands and spread their arms wide to cover the tree. If you've never had mezcal in your life, get ready to drink mezcal during every meal. Oaxaca is home to mezcal. And when you're there, it'll be stupid for you if you don't go on a mezcal tour. It's amazing to see how mezcal is actually made. And obviously at the end of the tours, you'll be able to try out fresh mezcal. Before going to Mexico, it was so hard for me to have just like straight liquor. But after leaving, I feel like I can just like drink it like water. I feel like if I have like one sip with this, I'm drunk. But. The goal is to sip on this, to enjoy the mezcal and appreciate the process of it and then enjoy your time. And one other thing too, that when you're in Oaxaca, you definitely want to take a Oaxaca class considering how big the food scene is there. I can't believe, but I didn't take a cooking class, but it is one of the first things that I would love to do there if I ever went back. I've heard that the instructors actually go into the markets with you and they buy the foods with you right on the spot. They'll take it back to the place and show you how to actually cook a Oaxacan dish. And like I mentioned before, Social Milko, I don't even think I'm saying it right, is actually my favorite neighborhood of all Oaxaca. I only discovered it the last week I was there, but I just 
fell in love with the place. I like to say it's the hipster part of Oaxaca. If I go back, I know that I would spend some time just staying there. Some of the recommended cafes and restaurants there are like I mentioned before, Philemon Coffee. It's a little bit outside of the main city attractions and the ones that you probably won't find in the vlogs, but I will say, guys, it is probably one of my favorite coffee shops. Ancestral and Chipiche Cafe. And on my last day there, I actually went back to Philemon Coffee and that was like my third time there just because I just fell in love with that place. Another neighborhood that you do want to visit that's actually not as popular is Hatlaco. It's a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood covered in a lot of street art and buildings. It's a nice little escape from town and fun fact, the buildings there are actually not allowed to be destroyed unless it's from a natural disaster. So there is a ton of history in Hatlaco. Whew. So this was a lot to cover in just one video, but if I can recommend some of the best things to do in Oaxaca City, that this is it. It's crazy to think that there were still a lot of things I couldn't do in the month I was there, but I guess that's for next time. And to reiterate, if you are visiting just the city itself, you don't need a car. Everything is about like 15 to 20 minutes on foot. But if you want to do certain activities like visiting the Sunday market and go to Hever de Laga, to get a car rental for at least two or three days. And again, if you guys are looking for some photography inspiration to check out my Instagram, on some photography spots in Oaxaca and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you guys so much for watching this far seriously and if you haven't done so already don't forget to like comment and subscribe onto this channel and I will see you guys in the next safe and happy travels y'all